uh, we're going to talk, talk about legal stuff. A recap of the last few sessions. When a optimization framework, customer journey mapping, measurement plan, implementing the analytics so you can measure every step of the customer journey, uh, run your business and uh, create an optimization uh, program. And if you find successful uh, flows, automate them. Talked about KPIs, conversion rate optimization and uh, building your marketing stack. Always be testing uh, at every part of the journey. Uh, if time and uh, uh, resources make it possible. Um, content marketing, create a content for each stage for different uh, uh, personas, different uh, functions with, within the DMU. If you're in uh, working for B2B, um, different kind of content for different phases. Um, if you have to choose, uh, create content close to the transaction first, because uh, you don't want to lose prospects at that moment. Okay, today we're gonna talk about legal. Disclaimer, uh, this presentation is no legal advice. This information uh, is for entertainment purposes only. It is composed to the best of our knowledge and ability, but always contact a lawyer or a legal consultant for conclusive advice for your specific situation. Uh, I think this is going to be the most, uh, forgive me my uh, thing, the uh, most boring presentation in the program, but uh, maybe the most important in some sense. Uh, about 80% we're gonna talk about GDPR, a uh, little bit about CCPA uh, and a lot about copyright. Um, GDPR, I will start with a lot of theory and in the end I will uh, close uh, with how this impacts online marketing. And GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation, harmonizes all privacy laws within the EU, protect EU, EU, EU citizens from electronic harm's way, for example, identity theft or unwanted ads like retargeting, unsolicited or unwanted, uh, make EU infrastructure more robust in the wake of the digitalization of society. In general, for all citizens within the EU, effective globally, so if you sell uh, to U EU citizens, you automatically, uh, it's, uh, the law is uh, for you. Um, for all personal data, uh, personal is PI, we come to that later, but also for B2B. So, um, scraping uh, email addresses or uh, uh, LinkedIn and fill it in with an Excel sheet. Um, we're gonna talk about it. Uh, effective is, was it on the May the 25th, 2018. The maximum fine uh, is 20 billion or 4% of annual global turnover, whichever is greater for infringements. Issuing warnings and reprimands, imposing a temporary or permanent ban on data processing, ordering the rectification restriction or ratio of data, and suspending data transfers to first countries. That's the, uh, the penalties you can get. What is personal data, or in short, PII? Uh, is any data that could potentially, for example, by combina combining data or meta metadata, me metadata, identify a specific individual and the information that can be used to distinguish one person from another or can be used for the anonymized and previously anonymous data can be considered PII. So if you have a database with um, email addresses and a credit card uh, number, it gets hacked and the hacker gets from a totally other company uh, uh, email addresses and say uh, uh, first name and last name, uh, the two combined can uh, do uh, big harm. Uh, that's why. A distinction, non-sensitive PII, uh, basic uh, postcode, zip, uh, race, gender, etc. cetera. Um, race, gender, or especially race. Um, uh, a sensitive uh, PI is, uh, information when disclosed could result in harm to individual when a data breach occurs. A data breach will also come to that what it is. This type of sensitive data often has legal, contractual, or ethical requirements for restricted closure. It must be encrypted, 
when in transit, transit and when the data is addressed. So addresses, of course, um, for example, that uh, to keep it really small, that the Excel sheet with uh, uh, potential prospects and the personal data, not the business data of the company, but of the persons working at the companies. Um, and uh, when you have it in an uh, Excel sheet somewhere on your uh, uh, in your folders, uh, make sure that if you have a Windows machine, it's on a encrypted folder. I'm not sure how Apple does it, but uh, you have to make sure you have it on an encrypted uh, folder. So if your laptop gets stolen, uh, they cannot access the data. Um, and for uh, when you send, for example, uh, uh, your uh, accountant or uh, your marketing agency or anyone uh, a file, do it by encrypted uh, encrypted zip, for example, 7-zip, and you send uh, the password, for example, by uh, SMS. So uh, it's a kind of two-way uh, identification. Examples of PII, email address, device IDs, MAC addresses, for example, cookie IDs, uh, IP addresses, Biometric information, uh, fingerprint eye scan, personal and identical uh, uh, financial information. It's a uh, United States uh, uh, shortening, I believe. Uh, unique identifiers such as pos password or social security numbers, employee personal records. Also, if you have a, 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 I say, a vacancy for a new job or you're looking for a CEO, or whatever, um, and uh, you have a form on your web sheets like, hey, upload your CV. Also, it requires an opt-in for the GDPR. If you uh, focus you on uh, uh, on your EU citizens, tax information, etc., password information, credit card numbers, bank accounts, etc. What is the law? The principles: be transparent, uh, no implied uh, consent. So always uh, generate an opt-in. Limit data when you need it. Uh, no scooping up data just because you can. Um, limiting how much you need it. Do we really only uh, need this? It must be accurate and up to date. Uh, so no old in um, say in current um, data. Limit storage, uh, storage of personal data. I don't keep it longer than you need it. Integrity and confidentiality encryption, uh, two-way identification, for example, a code uh, to your phone and somebody has to type it in or a QR uh, identification with your uh, smartphone. Um, temper evident locking. Accountability, keep a paper trail to demonstrate compliance. Um, also, I will get back to that a little bit. Um, the parties involved in the law, controllers, processors, and sub-processors, and sometimes even sub-sub-processors. Um, I'll get to the image in a moment. Controllers, the party that determines for what purpose and how personal data is processed. Um, Oh, I will get that also to, uh, to a concrete explanation later on. Uh, processors, the party that processes personal data on behalf of the controller. For example, Google Analytics, of, uh, if you use Microsoft uh, for uh, uh, their Outlook suite or their uh, Office suite, they're uh, your processor. Uh, sub processors, parties that uh, processors use, hires to inform its duties towards the controller. Uh, for example, if you hire a marketing agency and they use tools to conduct uh, work for you, and they, uh, for example, they handle your CRM data, um, you're the controller. The agency is the processor, and the tool they use is the subprocessor. Is your business a B2C focused company? 99% chance you are a controller. So actually, by, by definition, almost 99% uh, uh, you use tools like uh, a SaaS software tool or Excel or Google Sheets. So you must have at least one data processing agreement at this moment with a processor. B2B, controller for all personal data. 
for example, the uh, the new members of your uh, prospects or clients in your own CRM. Processor for all the PI data of your clients' customers. Subprocessor if you offer a tool service product to a processor. That as well, B2B or B2C. Uh, note, GDPR is only for uh, personal identifiable information. So if you offer a service to check the uptime of a website, GDPR, GDPR is not effective for, uh, I'd say, not effective is not, uh, I think you know what I mean, um, for the service itself, unless you collect any PA or the service collects any PA data while checking uptime. Be aware. If you ever implement any JavaScript pixel or tracker on your website, and it's all a little bit the same. Every pixel I've ever seen is JavaScript, but uh, in case you don't know the different words or what exactly you're looking at, JavaScript pixel tracker mostly the same. On your website app, uh, you have no control of the data gets collected. So be alert and uh, watch your um, data processing agreement. Um, I copy this. Okay. What should be in your data processing agreement, object of agreement, scope, nature, and duration of data processing, subjects of data processing, types of data you want to process, data storage. Um, that's the technical uh, part. So it's not uh, a fake description of how we're going to store your data. It's like, uh, hey, this is where you store your data. This is the technical uh, effort we did, etc. Terms of the contract and conditions uh, and contract termination. So, for example, um, if you have a you use a software tool, and they have your data of your customers, um, what happens if you don't pay? Um, can I keep the data or keep what you uh, uh, say? Um, as a kind of ransom, uh, that kind of details you have to think about. Um, part two, the controller is the entity responsible for establishing a lawful data process, is responsible for issuing instructions to the processor. Um, if the data processor believes that the instructions issued by the data controller violate the provisions of the GDPR, they have to immediately inform the data controller about their concerns and not get along with it. Sometimes on the commercial pressure that is uh, difficult, but um, if you want to keep liability away, you have to uh, think about it. Um, processor, you must have adequate information, uh, information security in place. They shouldn't and uh, have, that is uh, the law says actually top state of the art. So it's not like, uh, we use a tool uh, we updated three years ago. We really have to uh, have state of the uh, art security. Um, you shouldn't engage subprocessor. Uh, the processor shouldn't engage uh, subprocessors without the prior consent of the controller. And the controller must cooperate with the authorities in the event of an inquiry. Uh, you must report data breaches to the controller as soon as they become aware of them. Uh, again, what data breaches are we come in a second without undue delay. And undue delay, I believe, with um, maximum of three days, but uh, if any possible, within a few hours. It's really quite, uh, also has, of course, the damage that can be done. So uh, really as fast as possible. Uh, must give the, the data controller the opportunity to carry out audits. So examining the UDPR, so it's quite, so if you, um, for example, if you have an ISO certification um, and you say uh, certain standards you put in the ISO, um, your controller can, uh, uh, if you are the processor, can uh, audit you if you keep your own uh, 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 agreements in place, your own standards. For just one uh, example, uh, you must keep records of all processing, processing activities, uh, must help the controller to comply with data subjects' rights. For example, a request for uh, uh, insights, which data you have of a certain person. So they don't, you don't, you cannot uh, send them back 
as a processor to the controller. Like, hey, you have to do it with the controller because you have a contract with the controller. If you have uh, a person uh, ask for, hey, which information have do you have of me? Um, you just have to check your database and uh, uh, um, give them the information you have about them. Liability individuals whose data you hold may send queries or complaints to either the data controller or the data processor. Data processors are liable when they work outside of instructions provided to them by the controller and when they violate the terms of the GDPR. Processors can be liable due to claims of individuals, controllers, and authorities. Um, processor will not be liable if you can prove it's not responsible for the event giving rise to the damage. If a process is required for, to pay compensation, but is not wholly responsible for the damage, it may be able to claim back from the controller to share the compensation on which they are responsible. Um, and I believe you have contract freedom to arrange that. So for example, um, uh, you as a processor and your controller, your client mostly, um, will pay uh, upfront 50-50 and after the uh, case is uh, settled or went to court or whatever, um, one of the parties uh, pays 50-50 or, or the whole sum. But um, so, um, yeah, data protect, uh, protection impact assessment. It's required whenever processing is likely to result in a high risk of the rights or freedoms of individuals. At least required in the following cases, a systematic and extensive evaluation of the personal aspects of an individual, including profiling. Um, processing of sensitive data on a large scale. Since a system, systemic monitoring of public areas at large scale. Uh, you're on the few examples. Uh, bank screening as customers against, uh, against the credit reference database. A hospital about to implement a new health information database with patients. Health data. A bus operator about to implement onboard cameras to uh, monitor drivers and passengers' behavior. Not required. A community doctor processing personal data of his patients. Um, So large scale, you know, uh, it's a it's a um, fake term. Um, my own personal intuition says, well, anything until five thousand records, say a contact persons or something like that, uh, is in the safe area. I think anything above, I think uh, you should do do at least a a, a DPA a DP. IA, P, PIA, we say a lot of here in the Netherlands. Um, but just keep in mind, when you have a lot of data, you have, uh, you have a legal obligation to do it. What's the impact on digital marketing? Almost everywhere. For example, uh, Google Analytics. At this moment, if you have running Google Analytics on your website and you're not sure if you have it assigned uh, by implementation data processing agreement, and so if you don't, didn't, um, you're not abiding the law. Oh. Uh, CRM data, of course, uh, if you use a SaaS tool or Excel uh, or Google Sheets, uh, your email platform, uh, MailChimp or whatever, you have a DPA with them. If implementing a, a Facebook custom audience pixel on your website, you have a DPA with Facebook. Um, and of course, with those parties, uh, you mostly don't have an, uh, a negotiation uh, position. You just uh, take it or leave it. Uh, what's important for you is that you keep, you print out or uh, have a folder somewhere on your computer um, where you save all the uh, uh, processing agreements which you ever signed off. So you know, hey, uh, where's my data going? Uh, A-B testing tool. Uh, retargeting advertising, uh, dynamic pricing on a web page. If you have a big web shop, and uh, depending, for example, from which country somebody comes, you show another pricing. Um, if you have a tool for that, um, outsourcing service to agencies, 
uh, of course, not design copywriting or pure SEO. Uh, WordPress plugins. Uh, that's a, that's a uh, I'd say a difficult word uh, uh, world world because uh, sometimes WordPress plugins are of really uh, how do you say good liable uh, good faith companies but also sometimes they are just uh, provided by small developers somewhere in India Russia or wherever um, but you never know uh, which data the plugin actually collects on the back end so you really need a professional uh, developer to check out that so be aware that um, plugins can do their thing on the in the backyard um, examples of data breaches those are theft of hard copy notes usb drives um, computers or mobile devices uh, unauthorized person getting access to your lap laptop in any way, email account uh, or, or computer network, uh, sending an email with personal data to the wrong person, a real hack like a ransom affair, etc. So, a lot. And I believe only in the Netherlands, which is a relatively small country, after uh, the GDPR got effective, uh, thousands of um, data breaches are uh, are uh, um, I say uh, submitted um, I haven't read about a lot of fines so uh, most of the time it will be okay like a theft or a, a ransom hack or something um, but also in the in the, in the spirit of um, damage control and of uh, a uh, seeing what the how the market is behaving like uh, are people updating their software checklist for digital marketing uh, lock computer screen when going out to a meeting or toilet use different password for every account you have change password regularly uh, regularly i think uh, once a quarter or something um, send file spreadsheet by email with a zip7 or an alternative so encrypted zip files make sure that every entry point of PPI has a consent stamp so that you can prove on which time and which date and by which channel uh, you got consent for uh, for what purpose actually I forgot so time date channel and purpose on it uh, for example you did just forms on your website cookie consent but also affiliate forms and also printed coupons returns so think about old-fashioned newspaper like hey you want to uh, have a uh, information brochure sent home fill in your uh, address, address and email address and uh, your business address uh, to a free uh, uh, post office PO box uh, also that you have to have an opt-in like okay I uh, consent with the privacy and the uh, statement um, you can use um, oh yeah, if you collect uh, data for example if you have a web shop and you sell a simple product say uh, one dress um, and you don't have an opt-in for the newsletter uh, then you can only send a few uh, emails uh, that's uh, in part of the product so an order confirmation and uh, also a review a request for a review uh, but at a certain moment um, you cannot uh, use that email address anymore so you cannot say hey they're a client forever and uh, forever once the client that there's a uh, um, uh, a limited time and this is not really uh, the, the laws quite new so uh, legislation has to uh, uh, show up yet but uh, I think about half a year if somebody didn't reorder product of you and you didn't have the consent for a newsletter you don't have any right more to uh, to uh, uh, get in touch with them um, of course subscriptions of newsletters uh, you have a continuous relationship uh, make all, sure all your DPAs are in order, administrated, uh, 
encrypt the hard disk. I already tell, told you about it. Uh, keep your server up to date and keep a paper trail, paper trail of it. So you have to, if something uh, gets wrong and you, uh, uh, you get sued for liability, that you can prove, hey, I kept my things up to date and it was not my uh, our error. Um, clean your data. Don't store old customer data without consent to contact again, for example, a newsletter. Um, and of course, if you have a, a big customer database, like uh, think about uh, tens of thousands of clients, uh, but you for CRM anal analysis, and so you don't want to uh, lose the data, um, what companies do is they um, delete the, um, the real PI data, um, and they, um, as soon as they don't have the right to get in touch with the uh, consumer uh, customer again, uh, they uh, replace it with dummy data. But the metadata and the transaction data uh, keep in place, so they don't can I uh, say um, connect it to the person. But you can uh, your analysis and your uh, algorithms can keep running. Um, clean your data. Think about the custom journey, a lead generation form without consent to keep them updated uh, for the coming month, months or years is worth less. You can only send them info they regret. So if you have an, uh, a form, for example, download this white paper and you have uh, uh, at least say two opinions, two or maybe three, but uh, two like I uh, agree with the privacy statement. And uh, secondly, uh, yes, I want to also want to uh, uh, subscribe to the newsletter. Um, if they don't subscribe to the newsletter, um, in some small letters you can uh, can say for well, uh, part of this uh, 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 white paper you request is a sequence of uh, say two to uh, six emails. Uh, to educate you more about the subject where the white paper is about, but is limited and you have to specify um, what you're going to do, how long you're going to do it. And also if you have, um, you give the data to somebody else, um, they have, they need a specific opt-in for it. But the letter of the law, you have to even have to, um, specify each party, but I've never seen that. Only in one case, and that was uh, of, a, of, a, uh, of a, uh, a publisher, a digital publisher, um, and their business is selling your data or reselling your data. Uh, they sell magazine subscriptions and they have really uh, a few opt-in in their form. Of course, just a privacy opt-in or a, a, a transaction opt-in, if, if it's a transaction newsletter opt-in, and uh, yes, I'm okay to uh, have uh, occasional offers of partners of uh, our company, etc. And the, comp the name of the partners are mentioned. So it's not a fake, like, but they know uh, they're going to company A and B and C, have my uh, personal data. Um, be careful and diligent with scrape data. It's um, it's a fake world of a, a fake, fake, uh, not fake, but fake with a V A G U E, um, because we all uh, need to get our business going. Um, but by the pure letter of the law, uh, law that is a PII, and you don't have consent to get their uh, uh, data in a database. Uh, so, for example, uh, the Dutch or all European chambers of commerce, but uh, I'm, uh, of course I know the most of the Dutch chamber of commerce, uh, sole entrepreneurship companies, um, their data, uh, like where they live, etc., is deleted of the leaders for public records. Uh, so. Um, you cannot approach them anymore. Uh, in the old days before uh, 2018, you could uh, uh, buy or, uh, 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 company files at the Chamber of Commerce. Well, you still can, but only of limited companies. 
uh, or uh, uh, stock listed companies, but uh, or partnerships, but not of sole entrepreneurship companies. So be careful with that. Uh, I've put a link there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a good checklist, I believe. Just a second. Yeah, it's a process list. But you, you see it in the slide deck. Um, California Consumer Privacy Act is the most uh, nearest to the uh, GDPR. Um, and but it's by far not as uh, far reaching as the GDPR. I, just one thing about the GDPR before we're going to the CCPA. Um, in Holland, we have a saying like, uh, the soup won't be eaten as hot as it, it gets served. Um, So you have two things, the letter of the law, what we discuss here, and what you should do, should, should do to, uh, as an entrepreneur. So a lot of companies are, uh, the consent, uh, the cookie consent is already changing. Like uh, officially you have to uh, opt out um, uh, uh, marketing cookies, social cookies uh, or opt out, you have to opt in. So standard, they have to be opt out. Uh, for example, if you go, to my website, just a second. Uh, you have a cookie consent. Well, actually I'm not uh, following the law here. Why? Because I have this uh, marketing opt-in. It should be opt-out like this. And if somebody allows me for marketing, but nobody does that, of course. So that's why I put it in. And also uh, I'm running tools here. So I have to learn how I can uh, consult my clients about these tools, but uh, officially it has to be this. Uh, so for example, if we go to a big publisher, uh, new.nl from D DPG Media, it's the biggest news site in the Netherlands. This is their consent. And this is now how more it goes. Everybody says just accord, but uh, your cookie consent has to have to offer the possibilities. Uh, oh, it's standard inactive. Okay. The old still. That's a little bit seductive, but then uh, of the public company or the public, uh, the public news company, Always a bylaw that had big fines in the past, in the far past, six, seven years ago before GDPR. Well, not any cookies, maybe they don't collect anything that's possible. Um, so to wrap it up about GDPR, know when you break the law. That is uh, is my message and how uh, weighted your uh, uh, your uh, uh, break of the law is. Like if you have a, a scraped database of uh, say uh, 30,000 uh, uh, cold email addresses scraped from any website or something, and they don't know you. Um, and high ranking, uh, say legal officer or something, I think you, uh, and you send them a cold blast email. Uh, I think one or two may uh, irritate it and they think, hey, I didn't provide them uh, any uh, consent with this. So, um, CCPA. 
Okay, everybody sees CCPA versus GDPR, right? Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, I'm just going to read it. Um, this was the clearest comp uh, comparison I could find. Um, and even checked with a lawyer, like what I'm doing now is a copyright infringement because I want to copy this <laughs> this photo uh, in the presentation. I thought, nah, I'm going to show it in the webinar, uh, but because I'm showing it to you, actually it's a copyright infringement. Um, but, um, the CCPA, it applies to profit entities uh, uh, that process personal data residents of California. Big companies, 20, uh, 24 million annual revenue, uh, personal data of uh, at least 50,000 consumers uh, have at least half of their revenue from the sale of personal data. So it's really big, uh, I'd say professional yeah, lead generators or data uh, handlers or uh, uh, data providers. It's an opt-out regime, um, relatively uh, small fines. Well, US law can be tricky. I mean, if each address is a violation and you uh, talk about 100,000 uh, records and they have a lot of violations and the fine gets uh, quite high. So. Um, Check with you as lawyers, but uh, could be the case. Um, enforcement, also a lot of rights, the same uh, data portability, opt out, access data, disclosure, deletion. And also that's our rights um, here and on the GPR, right to be informed, access rectification, erasure, restrict processing, data portability, uh, Object processing rights in relation to automated decision making and profiling. Um, so the last one is what I talked about for what dynamic pricing, but also all other kind of automations that are running, um, which uh, have influence on the offering of the pricing. I have to see still uh, like real, uh, real world business case. Uh, Cases, for example, we I think we uh, most of us know that uh, the pricing of uh, airline companies is uh, extremely uh, personalized. So I believe any minute that you uh, go again, or anybody else, like if you have a, a friend on the phone, hey, uh, the tickets to uh, Barcelona, uh, how much do you, uh, the, he sees another price or she. Um, and by law, that's not uh, uh, allowed anymore. Um, but I haven't seen any processes that um, uh, or public and, uh, say uh, crying out of those companies like, "Hey, this is really a big, uh, big thing." Um, so uh, this is about it for CCPA and GDPR. Uh, Yeah. Um, I, for, for, uh, yeah, not actually, well, not accidentally. Today I did my own uh, request for information. It was at my uh, health insurance company, and why it triggered me that? I got. I'm a little bit overweighted. Uh, a little bit. It's uh, <laughs> for discussion. Uh, discussion open. But anyway, uh, but I got an email. Like, uh, do, you, do you have a too much high? Blood pressure, pressure, and I thought this is a strange uh, subject line. And I thought I want to know: do, Does any ever, or every client of uh, my uh, health insurance company get this uh, email? If not, probably not. Why? What were the selection of criteria of their marketing campaign that I got this uh, uh, this email uh, campaign of them? But I never did it before. So it's it like I was really triggered. Like, hey, this is uh, strange. And this is a legal right, and they have to uh, comply with it for within two weeks. How did you contact them? 
yeah, they have an uh, email address. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, uh, fg uh, at insurancecompany.nl. And fg stands uh, for uh, Functionaris Gegevensbescherming. Uh, so it should be in English like something like uh, Officer of Data Compliance, uh, OD or so, OD at insurancecompany.nl. Yeah. And uh, I just uh, typed in, in Google. Um, uh, privacy request for information, uh, name of the, my insurance company, and uh, that's how I got to the email address. Mm -hmm. um, of course, big companies, like if you do that for yourself, and there are also uh, 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 posts, uh, really entertaining posts on it on the LinkedIn. Uh, if you do it for yourself, for, for example, for Google, for your Google account, or uh, for your Facebook account, you, you really get a lot of gigs of data they have about you. And um, it's fascinating what they collect about you. But uh, just for fun, you should do a bit. And those large companies have this process, of course, automated. Um, smaller companies will uh, put somebody at work and uh, put everything in a, a few files and uh, send the zip file to the customer. Uh, but it's a right, and you should comply with it. Um, and I think if you don't comply with it, uh, the, uh, the, the, the request of the consumer in this case, or the business uh, DMU uh, person, um, I think the authorities would really irritate it if you wouldn't uh, give all the data you have. So, because it's a basic, uh, uh, more, far more heavier than you collect some email uh, addresses on a spreadsheet or something. Um, since yours was a GDPR related request, right? I wonder in the US if we were to request the same thing with like a large bank or something like that, how they would respond in light of the fact that they need to comply with GDPR, but the request is coming from like myself, a US citizen. No, if it's a US citizen, uh, I think not. They don't have to comply or uh, uh, US law, uh, if any law in the US. Yeah. Uh, but any U EU citizen, uh, they ha should have yeah. to comply. Yeah, got it. So, yeah. Uh, well, intellectual properties, um, trademarks, brand names, domain names, designs, patents, code, text copy. I mean, text copy is just a copy of your, uh, of uh, an, uh, uh, an article, blog post, or uh, your brochure. Um, just check if anybody tries to get in or goes away. Uh, no. Music, of course, video, photo, ideas, and research, etc. Um, um, I'm not a big uh, knowledge vehicle on the part of global intellectual property, but in EU law, a good faith versus bad faith uh, has a really big impact. Like for example, uh, if any uh, domain name of Coca-Cola would be available for McDonald's or Nike, you, you get my grip, um, it's bad faith if I register a domain name. But uh, good faith if, uh, hey, I, did, I couldn't know this. Or, uh, it's not uh, common knowledge. Uh, protecting your brand. Uh, register your brand name logo, preferably, preferably with the Madrid database. That's the uh, World Intellectual Property Office or organization. I'm not sure uh, the last O. Um, but it, it, that's quite expensive. Like. Um, we have a, 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 a EU, uh, EU um, trademark office, uh, but again, it's only EU. So if you have a, 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 a you're planning for a big brand, um, and you also have the funding because it's a few thousand uh, euros at least, um, I consider, consider the Madrid database. Um, you, there are uh, paid services to check your uh, brand registration. A long time ago, I had uh, a domain name, uh, a long time ago, say uh, six years ago. So uh, I had a uh, marketing facebook.info, I believe. Yeah. Um, 
and I got uh, um, through my hosting provider, I got an, uh, uh, they got a request to provide my information. Uh, he couldn't do it because uh, Dutch privacy laws before GDPR didn't allow him. Um, but I was happy that that it, uh, the the domain name expired after three months, so I got away um, uh, with a, a quiet getaway. Say I'm not sure in English, um, but professional companies are scanning their brands constantly through all kinds of services, like uh, and they hire, of course, uh, the service therefore. But um, uh, if you really uh, care about your brand and you, uh, you uh, you have a lot of competitors or uh, there are services to help you out. Um, set up Google Alerts, of course. Um, also, if you're interested in what your competitors are doing, where they're publishing, um, send a cease and desist notifications for possible infringements. Uh, purely marketing, exclude partners or affiliates on advertising on your brand name. Uh, if, you, if you advertise yourself, of course, in Google, but uh, a lot of companies do. And you don't want uh, your partner advertise next to you and uh, drive up the auction price of the cost per click. And this would be a st standard thing in your all your agreements and conditions with partners and affiliates. Um, and of course, you can always like uh, with an exclusion uh, clause, like uh, unless uh, agreement uh, by a letter or by a writing. You understand. Um, request brand protection to Google. Prevents other advertising using your, using your brand name. Copyright. Working with creative work. Designers, photographers, agencies, freelancers, and also architects. Uh, they have a really, let's say, um, crippling power of their on their creative work also if they once they have delivered it for you so if you are free or you have the negotiation power uh, that's what is what i mean with free um, to set the terms in the agreement so you're not buying from a, a platform uh, demand unlimited exclusive 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 rights global forever and non-retractable full and unlimited ownership without men mentioning the source or the creator in all other cases, you uh, probably you don't have any negotiation power. So read um, the clauses. Uh, if you buy from a pet platform, uh, check the conditions and put in your use case. Uh, like so, for example, uh, um, pond5.com, P-O-N-D. 5.com is a really big um, a directory of all kinds of uh, video stocks, uh, stockage uh, footage, um, and uh, the uh, kind uh, not only on uh, the technical specs, but also where do you use it? Like, is it for a TV commercial, or is it only on a website? Is it on your own website? It can be embedded. All kinds of things that um, drive the price. Um, of the footage you want to buy on that website. So think carefully about, hey, where, uh, where I'm going to use this. Um, and other uh, stock photo websites also like uh, how many v uh, visitors per year are going to see it, etc. cetera. Um, of course, there's always uh, an acceleration, uh, fair use criticisms and commentary, news reporting, uh, also sharing on social media as a part of the news reporting, research and scholarship, nonprofit edu educational uses and uh, parody that are uh, international copyright law, fair use uh, exemptions of copyright, also limited, so not uh, entire books or entire articles, but paraphrases, uh, check, are you creating something new or just copying? Are you competing with the source? Are you copying from giving the offer credit does not always let you off the hook. Um, the more you take, the less fair your use is likely to be. This we already have. Um, and this was the end for this. Um, 
in the table of contents, I also had uh, something about um, say returns for uh, e-commerce companies. Well, um, EU law says uh, internet companies uh, have to offer a 14 day uh, uh, free uh, uh, return policy. Um, a lot of companies are upping that onto 30 days. Um, and there are also some uh, laws um, that are specific for each country. For example, for uh, Germany, uh, I'm not sure what the word is, but say it's uh, the footer of every website needs a declaration of like who's the responsible in the end, uh, a net natural person, so not uh, a business person or a legal entity, but a, a person person. Um, we can get in touch with is if anything is wrong so uh, there are some little laws that's uh, applicable per country um, maybe i will get into that uh, in another session but um, there was a little bit too much for today for this session um, important for you is that um, you always need an explicit opt-in when you collect any data uh, you need to uh, prove if the, really the shit hands the fan when uh, you got the approval through which channel and for which um, processes or how long the process could uh, take. So what you could do with the consent. Keep your stuff up to date. Prove that you uh, uh, got your stuff up to date. Uh, 